Sarah, an overweight teen who often helps out in her parents' butcher shop, is looking out at a group of young and cool girls. These girls are her bullies, who mercilessly make fun of her weight. She usually keeps a safe distance from these girls, especially Maka and Roki. Even though Claudia, who used to be Sarah's friend, does not actively take part in the mockery, she's still an accomplice in Sarah's eyes. Outside the shop, these mean girls and their guy friend, Pedro, have gathered to plan for the Madrigal festivals. But before that, Claudia needs to make a visit to Sarah's shop to pick up her mother's order. So with the decision to meet at the waterfall, Claudia goes to the butcher's shop. Roki also tags along so that she can make fun of Sarah. Since Claudia's family is a regular customer of the shop, Sarah's father starts small talk with her. He asks if she's going to the festivities. Then he tells Sarah to go out and enjoy herself with Claudia. But Sarah tells him that she has to study, and Sarah's mother tells her that she can go if she finishes her studying. She then offers Claudia some homemade sausage, which the girl kindly declines. Then, after receiving her order, they leave the store. And this whole time, while they were in the store, Roki was making a video. As soon as they get out, Roki shows the video to Maka and Pedro. She also posts a picture of Sarah with her parents on her social media with the hashtag, The Three Little Pigs. Sarah becomes irritated when she sees Roki's post and accidentally liked the post. During the lunch hour, Sarah is having lunch together with her family, but Sarah does not have any appetite. She looks at the phone and sees her bully's posts, enjoying themselves in the waterfall. Now that the girls are in the waterfall and her mother is taking her afternoon nap, Sarah sneaks out to go to the local pool. She knows that this is the perfect time to go to the pool when there are not many people around and she can avoid the judgmental stares from other people. Next, when she's about to enter the pool, a man suddenly emerges from the water. She's stunned to see him, as she had not expected anyone to be present at that time of day. Call it a stroke of bad luck, because just then, Maka, Claudia, and Roki arrive at the bridge by the pool. Claudia tells Maka to get going, but how could the other two girls miss such a nice opportunity to bully Sarah? They not only call her Piggy, but also label this unknown man as her boyfriend. As they continue to make comments about her, Sarah couldn't withstand it and dives into the water while the man leaves the pool. Now, in addition to the verbal taunts, Maka and Roki have come down to physically assaulting Sarah as they try to hold her head underwater with the help of a pool net. Claudia asks Maka to stop, but Maka turns deaf to her words. After struggling for a while, Sarah breaks free and dives deeper into the water. While trying her best to swim fast, Sarah fails to notice a man with his hands tied, sinking at the bottom of the pool. The two bullies run away with Sarah's belongings and also order the unwilling Claudia to grab Sarah's towel. Left with nothing but the swimsuit on her body, Sarah runs towards the town under the scorching sun. On the way, a car follows her, and from it comes two troublesome boys who call her names. After taunting the poor girl, the boys drive off, leaving the devastated Sarah crying. Nevertheless, Sarah continues and arrives at the backwoods track. She glances at the white van parked on the side of the track and walks past it. Sarah is just a few meters ahead of the vehicle when she hears the engine start, which scares her. Just now, she misses the scene of the same mysterious man back from the pool, dragging Claudia into the van. The man looks at Sarah and stops the van a little bit ahead of her. There, she sees Claudia inside the van, begging her to help her. When the man opens up the front door, Sarah becomes so scared that she pees on herself. But when she sees that the man has left a towel on the ground, she expresses her gratitude in gesture, and the screaming of Claudia disappears as the van drives away. She hurriedly wraps the towel and runs toward the town. On passing by the police station, the dog barks at her, and Juan Carlitos, the policeman in the distance, yells if she's okay. But without sparing him a glance, she heads towards her home. As soon as she reaches her house, she goes straight to the bathroom. But under the shower, all she could hear is Claudia's screams. Despite calling Sarah for quite a while and not getting any response, Sarah's mom barges into the bathroom. When she sees that her daughter is covered with sunburns, the mother immediately understands that Sarah has sneaked out to the pool. So she tells her to put some lotion on and to look after the shop. Stressed, Sarah goes to her room instead of the shop. This time, her favorite snack does not do any wonders to relieve her stress, as she once again looks at Roki's post and curses her bullies. The next day, she has her eyes fixed outside the window. She sees Pedro, and when their eyes meet, she instinctively hides. A short while later, her dad sends her on an errand to get a tube light for the shop. In the store, she notices the friendship bracelet that she shared with Claudia on her hand, which troubles her. 
So immediately, she grabs a pair of scissors and cuts the bracelet before walking out of the store. Meanwhile, Sarah is not aware that a man has followed her into the store. This man picks up the broken bracelet and also gets the snacks. Something unusual happened in the local pool the previous day, so it has become the talk of the town. Right outside the store, Sarah's mother meets her and asks if she knows anything about it. She then drags her daughter and goes to the pool to find out what's happened, but in the meantime, they fail to notice the white van trailing them. On reaching the pool, Sarah starts getting nervous seeing police and other people gathered there. They come to know that the lifeguard is dead and the pool waitress is missing. Seeing the dead body of the lifeguard being transported, Sarah throws up into the pool. Her mother then tells the police officer that her daughter has been to the pool and that she might get infected if she was in the same pool as the corpse. When the police officer asks her if she'd seen anything strange the previous day, she lies and tells them that she'd not been to the pool. Instead, she tells them that she went to the river. The mother tries to force her daughter to tell the truth, but Sarah explodes in anger, saying that the girls used to call her Piggy, so she did not go to the pool. In a fit of rage, she even calls out to her mother for not doing anything about the girls. As they're about to leave, we see Pedro noticing them. Over the dinner table, Sarah's mother let the father know that Claudia and her friends used to bully their daughter for being overweight. Sarah's parents honestly had no idea that they were picking on her. But Sarah's mother is still a little hurt that her daughter yelled at her for doing nothing about it. Meanwhile, the man has followed them to her house, and now he's broken into her neighbor's house, whom he ends up killing. Later that night, Elena, Claudia's mother, visits Sarah's house to ask her if she knows anything about where Claudia might be. But now that Sarah's mother knows that Claudia used to be one of the people who bullied her girl, she spares no time to snap back at Elena for coming and questioning her daughter. And immediately, she kicks her out. Sarah is unable to calm herself and searches for her comfort snack in her stash, but she remembers she didn't buy any snacks earlier that day. However, a packet of snacks lies near the window. Now she's scared, but still gobbles down the snack. Then she goes to her brother and grabs her laptop to find her phone through the app, but he does not let her use the laptop. Then she goes straight to her father and pockets his phone. In the evening, she goes to search for her phone that was in her backpack taken by Maka. On reaching there, she encounters the escapee bull, but luckily it does not attack her. And calling her phone continuously with her father's phone, she goes deeper into the woods. On her way, she sees blood splatters on a large boulder, and nearby, she hears her phone ringing. As soon as she grabs her backpack, the same mysterious killer man flashes the light on her. They hear some vehicular noise nearby, so the man immediately pulls Sarah into the ruins. Elena has gathered Maka and Roki's parents and has come to the woods, searching for Claudia's phone. As the parents are approaching quite close to them, Sarah and the man are hiding in the ruins. The man softly touches Sarah's face and covers her mouth to stop her from making any noise. Shortly after, he leaves, and only Sarah remains. The parents have also reached the ruins, but Sarah keeps herself hidden from their eyes. Just then, a scream is heard as one of them locates a dead body, and everyone moves in that direction. Grabbing the opportunity, Sarah flees the scene. Just then, the police officers who are mobilized to find the escapee bull happen to be nearby, so as they follow the source of the scream, they reach the scene as well. Sarah reaches her house, where she sees her parents searching for her father's phone. Soon enough, her mother comes and finds the phone on the floor, and as she enters the kitchen, she catches Sarah hidden behind the door. But she thinks that her daughter has come to eat the food secretly, so she scolds her for messing with her diet. Sarah comes to her room and looks for updates on the incident and feels nervous. So to relieve her stress, she starts pleasuring herself, and during this, all she could see is that man's face. Immediately, she composes herself as she hears something thrown at her windowpane. Turns out that it's Pedro, and he calls her out to talk. While she walks away from the home with him, Sarah's mother comes out to do the laundry. There she notices a blood stain on one of the towels, and looking closer at the tag, she sees the initial CS. During their little chat, Pedro tells Sarah that he knows she was in the pool yesterday and asks her why she had lied to the police. Pedro knew about this since Claudia had sent the video to her group chat previously. Sarah then tries to tell him that they've all been picking on her and that she almost died because of the girls. On the other hand, Pedro begs her to tell the police that she'd seen the girls yesterday. Initially, Pedro was supposed to be with the girls the day Claudia went missing, so her mother suspects him as being responsible for their disappearance. Pedro even mentions that he can end up in jail for this. Therefore, Sarah promises him that only when he's accused by the people, she'll tell them about the pool. Just then, Elena has come to find Pedro and asks where Claudia is. Now that the waitress has been found dead, 
and Claudia's phone was found near the dead body, Elena is getting anxious. Just seeing Sarah with Pedro, Elena starts making a scene that attracts not only the passers-by, but also Sarah's mother who is out hanging the laundry. Sarah's mother interferes when Elena accuses Sarah of hiding something. The commotion scares Pedro and he tells everyone that Sarah was the last person to see the girls at the pool. He even spills the truth that Maka and the girls tried drowning her in the pool. Things escalate to the point that the police interfere and they're all taken to the police station. Meanwhile, the mysterious man has been observing everything that's going on. Now, there's no point in hiding the truth, so Sarah tells the officers that the girls always picked on her and the previous day, they'd even tried drowning her. Juan mentions that the situation is serious and the girls' lives could be in danger. Just when Sarah was about to say something more, her mother cuts her off and tells her to be quiet. When everyone's at the police station, the killer enters Sarah's house and attacks her father. Just as Sarah and her mother enter the house, they start arguing. Sarah's mother closes the front door and showing the towel to Sarah, asks if the towel belongs to Claudia. Now that her own mother has started questioning her like all the other people, Sarah becomes infuriated and starts yelling that she hates her and wishes that they were all dead. Unable to control her anger, Sarah's mother raises her hand to hit Sarah, but midway her hand is caught by the man. In fear, she tells Sarah to run away, but just a second later, the man hits her and she ends up on the floor. Sarah's mother stretches out her hand towards Sarah, but the man pulls Sarah and gets out of the house as her mother lies unconscious. Outside, a few boys make inappropriate comments about them, especially Sarah. As soon as they enter the vehicle, the man reverses the vehicle intending to hit the boys, and then they drive off. During their journey, the man pulls out his favorite snack and Sarah sees her broken bracelet in the glove compartment. When he gets distracted in closing the shelf, he does not notice the bull right in front of the road and the van collides with it. Then Sarah faints after seeing a horn right in front of her eye. Later, the man carries Sarah and enters a rundown warehouse situated somewhere in the countryside. When she regains consciousness, the man is nowhere to be seen, so she decides to walk around the warehouse. But as soon as she sees Claudia and Roki alive, she breathes a sigh of relief. The girls are seen hanging, with their hands tied to a pipe. Sarah quickly goes and removes the cloth tied to their mouths. Then she tries her best to undo the knot on the hands and legs, but she can't succeed. When Claudia cries and asks why she didn't call the police, Sarah starts panicking. Despite her effort to help them, Claudia still has the audacity to call her an idiot. Hearing the sound of the engine outside the warehouse, Roki urges Sarah to run. The man comes and calls Sarah out, but Roki distracts the man as Sarah hides. So, to make Roki silent, the man attacks her with the knife. Sarah runs around the warehouse hiding from him, but there's no exit. Eventually, the man corners her, and she finds herself with Maka's corpse and a severed leg. In a state of utter panic, she screams at the top of her lungs, but the man pulls the shivering Sarah and calms her down in his arms. It seems like he had no intention to hurt Sarah, but they have to finish what he started. He brings her in front of Roki and hands her a knife and encourages Sarah to kill her. He even pushes her towards Roki, but with a determined look, she makes a U-turn and charges towards him. Nevertheless, he easily grabs her hand and hits her. As he moves to grab the gun, Claudia hits him with her legs and seeing an opening, Sarah picks up the knife and stabs him in the stomach. During their tussle, the man accidentally fires the gun after hitting Sarah with the base of the gun. A bracelet falls to the ground and the blood starts dripping near Sarah and then comes the screams. The fired bullet tore Claudia's hand. Seeing the blood of her friend, something awakened inside Sarah. Then, gritting her teeth, she pounces on the killer. Maintaining a tight hold, she bites into his neck until she tears a piece of meat off of him. Heavily wounded, the man staggers and slips in his own blood. When he gently extends his hands towards Sarah, she immediately regrets what she did. Then she caresses his motionless body and cries. When she slowly grabs the gun, Roki still calls her Piggy and asks what she's doing. She then points the gun towards her and fires it. Again, she points the gun toward Claudia and shoots. Despite all the suffering she had to go through, Sarah still does not have the heart to kill her bullies. She doesn't kill the girls and instead fires at the ropes to let them free. Right away, she turns around and leaves the warehouse. With a bloodied body, Sarah is walking down the track road. And after a long walk, she reaches an asphalt road when a motorbike comes into her view. The bike stops in front of her and the rider turns out to be Pedro, broken in every imaginable way. She asks him for his help. Pedro then looks at her for a moment and tells her to hop on his bike. And finally, as the movie ends, we see Sarah and Pedro heading toward the town to get help.